Let's go straight live to Kikar Rabin, Rabin Square, where I-24 News diplomatic correspondent Tal Shalev, who did this fabulous report with Mandy Kargosowski, is standing by. And the co with her is co-chief at the Camp David Summit and senior fellow at the INSS, Gilad Shir. Well, yes, yeah, we were speaking of hope for peace. Well, against the, well, not against, there is a strong notion that uh, Rabin's assassination killed the peace process, but actually the peace process continued. It was stalled under uh, Rabin's predecessor, Benjamin Netanyahu, but when Ehud Barak came into power in 1999, negotiations with the Palestinians were renewed uh, in full power. And as you said, we're joined by uh, Gilad Cher, who was the chief negotiator at uh, Camp David. Gilad, at the end of the negotiations at Camp David, when they collapse. The Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak came back to Israel and he said um, there is no partner at this point for a peace agreement. So in your opinion, what was the, what was the case? Why don't we have a, a process today? Was it Rabin's assassination or was it the fact that there in, in, in fact there was no Palestinian partner? Well, there's a myriad reasons for that, but I believe that uh, Rabin's assassination was a major major derailment of, uh, of the process, which we resumed, as you uh, rightly pointed out, uh, when Barack was uh, elected to power. When we came back from Camp David, indeed, Barack said, there's no partner for the entire end of conflict core issue resol resolution uh, at this point in time. And the fact of the matter is that we continued to negotiate. We had about 40 daily sessions between Camp David and the outbreak of the Intifada. And then, a couple of months later, we had the Clinton parameters, which, up until uh, those very days, um, is a very valid plan for ending the conflict. But that sentence that Barack said that day, that uh, that there's no Palestinian partner, basically, um, in the peace camp, many believe that that was disastrous for the peace camp, that had a disastrous effect on the Israeli will for peace, on the Israeli belief or trust in even reaching an agreement with the Palestinians. In hindsight, hindsight you're right. I, uh, I agree. However, uh, we continued to negotiate, and the negotiation uh, again resumed in the Annapolis process eight years later during uh, Almert's uh, premiership. I believe that uh, there's no other way for Israel's national security and for Israel's character and identity as the national homeland of uh, the Jewish people, a democratic one, a liberal one, based on universal values. There's no other way but to separate from the Palestinians into a two-state, for two people, um, reality with a, a border that, uh, that it is delineated between, uh, between those two uh, national homes of um, respectively the Palestinian people and the Israeli people. Can this it is, happen with the current leaderships in the Israeli and Palestinian society? Uh, well, I believe there's uh, hope for that to happen. Uh, I can't assess at this point in time that this is uh, very uh, probable in the, um, in the upcoming foreseeable future. Gilad Sher, thank you very much for joining us, Yael. So uh, we see uh, definitely that uh, the Rabin assassination has a disastrous effect basically on the will, but there were also other historical events that changed the course of history and had an impact on where we are standing today. Back to you, to the studio. Indeed so, Tal Shalev in the square.